Hello and welcome to Devaliente Plays Signs of the Sojourner by Echo Dog Games. This game was part of Ichio's bundle for racial justice and equality. This video contains mild language. Discretion is advised. Now without further ado, let's get started. Oh. Uh, what? Hey. The Cataclysm. Elias comes running up to the store, clearly shaken. He lets out a huge sigh of relief upon seeing you. You're safe. I came running right over. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Okay, I can... Okay. The town's still standing, but it looks like hell out there. Hopefully no one got too hurt. The store fared better than some other places around Bartow, even if you didn't have too much of value stocked in there anyway. The coffee shop's roof partially collapsed. Terrible. I said I'd help repair it, but there's no way we have enough building materials to go around. Not after seeing outside. Okay. Why are you doing this to me, sir? I guess I can't do that. There's no time for subtleties. The whole town is in trouble. Look, I am trying. I really don't have time for this. Not when I should be trying to help fix the coffee shop. D Ugh, great, and we're done. What is that? Distressed and grieving. Whatever. Just come see me if you find some scrap, okay? The caravan never showed, so you really need to step up. Elias has requested scrap for repairs around Bartow. Okay. Um, you need to stop giving me <laughs> new stuff. Come on. <sighs> okay, I really got to think about this, don't I? So I have double, 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 double. Double and a half, double and a half. If I could find circle, triangle, circle, triangle, then I could get rid of this one. But I think I can get rid of this one because I have a double, double of the square and diamond. Oh. He's shaking his tail. Oh, baby. I gotta make you feel better. Thunder's not used to the ground shaking under his paws. He gives a nervous whine and a tentative tail wag as you approach. Little oh, baby, no. Okay, you're just gonna get all my love. All of it. Every love. Every love ever. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You scratch behind his ear until his shaking stops and he nuzzles close for comfort. <laughs> okay, so it looks like she could use a hand. Roadhouse looks busy. He must be inside. So let's talk to Masha real quick. The furrows in Masha's weathered brow run even deeper than those the earthquake opened in her now ruined garden. Straightening toppled planters, she radiates a quiet but unmistakable determination. Well, don't just stand there. Give me a hand with picking this place up. Flowers don't plant themselves, you know. Okay. 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 
And if there's one thing you can count on, it's nothing going right. Well, at least this here's a start, if I do say so myself. Still, it's going to take a lot, take more, just a bit of elbow grease to fix this place up. Okay. Okay. Maybe that caravan of your mother's might be some use for once. That is, if they even show up. They probably won't. No use waiting around for them. You best get out, out there, even if it's on your own. In fact, I'd say that's the least you could do. Well, thank you, Grandma. Times like the, these are when you're circle wagons and and take care of your own. Hmm. Okay, at least I have that. Ugh. Stop giving me crap. Oh. Yeah, sorry, Grandma. This is your idea of helping? You're just smashing dirt around. I am trying. The, uh, I can't help at all. Well, we're gonna do this. Land sakes, I ought to have known better than expect an understanding from the likes of you. Despite your best intentions, you only seem to be getting in Masha's way. Perhaps it's best to see yourself out. Oh, yeah. stop giving me combinations of cards. Mm. All right, Sam, what we got? A handful of patrons stand outside Samuel's roadhouse while Samuel himself surveys the damage. The structure appears sound, but he's wringing his hands to approach. Can I please actually help somebody today, please? I can't recall the last time we had a quake like that. You were right, kiddo. No. Now's not the time. Well, I'm trying. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having multiple of those cards. Like, you have no idea. We're lucky. A lot of others in town, not so much. I've got a plan, though. Just need your help. If it's in the cards, <laughs> folks are going to need feeding, whether they're from Bartow or from the in the country a ways. Okay. Uh, why are you like this? Do you hate me? Is that... Okay. It only does the right hand. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm. Now I'm thinking time to turn this roadhouse into a Bartos one and only community food cooperative. Keeping folks fed no matter how the quake impacted them. <laughs> Sounds good. I would love to help you. I expect it's going to be a busy time and probably short staffed on top of it all. Not that I blame my staff between injuries and damaged homes. This is the last place they ought to be working. <sighs> hmm. No worries, I get it. Long days all around. Yep, and we're done. My fault. Duty's calling. Catch up later? <sighs> Samuel seems to have his hands full with dam damage. Feeling like you're just getting in the way, you decide to excuse yourself. Ugh. I mean, those are helpful. Mm. Mm. 
All right, so what is my going to be my plan of action? Yeah, so where is the caravan? I'm wondering if they got lost somehow. Because, yeah. Why are those colored? Mm. The thing is, like, I don't know how to get to Persari if I have to go to someone in Althurst. Because if I was to make... If I was to go literally to all of these places, it would take me more than a trip. Like a single trip. Like I would have had to start going away from the caravan like the first time. So. All right. Stranger isn't talking to me. There's two new people to talk to here. That kid. Oh, there's a new person in Bukumboro. There's a new person there. Okay. Okay, I just need to get... Oh, a lot of people want to talk to me. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. I really got to figure this out because I can't get to Wave Dancer and I need to get there. Um. So. They would have gone to Tosend Canals and then to Anka, and then they would have been back to Bartow. If not Bukumber or Clifton or whatever. Hmm. This is really interesting. All right, I want to go to Hara. Like, really badly, I want to go to Hara. Okay. And I have a lot of people to talk to. Okay. Broken windows and cracked walls indicate that Pachinko did not go unscathed by the recent earthquake, but repairs are well underway. The colorful enthusiasm of the artists here have gone toward beautifying recently repaired homes and galleries. Aww. Isabella is busy sweeping glass and pottery shards away from her shop front. When she hears her footsteps, she isn't shy about beckoning you over. I wish that you didn't have to see my shop like this. Would you please help me sweep before anyone gets hurt? Okay. Uh, hopefully I'm, uh, nope, I'm off to a grand start. Mm-hmm. Are you in a hurry to go somewhere? No, I just ha don't have the cards. Yeah. You're generous, just like your mom was way back when we moved he out here together. I thought mom was from here. We were rivals to Tomas's grandfather and Marquez's mother. Our friendship never faltered. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> I thought that taking talking would help pass the time. I would love for it to pass the time. Like, you have no idea. Okay. Your mom was always working to make other people's dreams possible. She came out here with me, but when she wanted to move to Bartow, I couldn't say no. You're a good child. I reckon she made the right choice to raise you in Bartow. Especially seeing what's become of the circle. Okay, well, I got some licorice for the shop. Um... I 
Okay, Marquez. Marquez collects the torn canvases from what remains of her outdoor show. With unwavering poise, she holds the paintings punctured by branches or disfigured by sheer force with steady hands. Oh, I know what you're thinking. How can Marquez be so calm, so regal at a time like this? It's because I'm always prepared for the future, you see? It's probably going to go badly. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's because I don't know how. I don't think you're following. Probably not, though. Stressed is weird. Try to keep up. Please tell me if I win this, you'll give me the road to. <sighs> yeah, so you probably know how to get to Hara. Think whatever you want, just don't forget to tell Tomas to stay put. Okay. Marquez wants to. Okay. Uh. How do I just like say no to this? Whatever. Wants me to pressure him to. S Marquez wants me to pressure him to stay in Pachenko. Okay. Well, this is probably gonna end terribly. Instead of painting, Tomas is pacing in tight circles, brow furred and muttering to himself. He doesn't notice you at first, only to let out a, a little yelp when he does. Oh, it's you. That was quite the start. No apologies necessary. I just have a lot on my mind right now. Hey, maybe you can help. Do you think I should stay in Pachinko? Uh, no. I've been thinking of moving to Clifton, but Marquez doesn't think I should. Should I? Uh, end your turn and listen. End your turn and prompt the other person to play two cards. Oh. Okay. You must play two cards. Um. Please don't mention this to Marquez. I don't think she'd be very pleased with me for thinking about leaving. Marquez says she can make me famous. Sounds nice, but also beyond scary. But if you think it's okay. Um, eh? I don't have an opinion one way or another, kid. Um... I don't think I want to stay here anymore. The circle is so intimidating. You weren't able to ally, allay Thomas Tomas's fears of fame, leaving him to wring his ha hands over his future. All right, bye, Tomas. Okay. I feel like I need to go to Anka. So I'm just gonna hightail it there. Your shirt changed. The winding alleys of Anka are strangely subdued. Many of the shops shudder despite the hour. An acrid smell fills the streets, leaking from some unknown source. The train station sits dark and empty. Little Basilio. Five-finger discount. Little Basilio and his crew emerge from the broken window of a storefront pocket stuffed with stolen goods. Can I just not talk to people? Is that an option? 
Yo, have you noticed this place is totally free-for-all ever since the earthquakes? And when I say free-for-all, I mean free for me and my crew. Cool. How dare. It used to be just the soap was free, but seriously, old tech, food, and drink hockey sticks? Literally, every item in Anka is now available at a five finger discount. But perhaps I've said a little too much. You're cool with a friendly game of Finders Keepers, ain't ya? Uh, sure. Hmm. I thought you were cool. Guess not. I'm trying, kid. <laughs> Getting a bit distracted. These stores ain't gonna loot themselves, you know. Um... Hmm. Are we both wasting each other's time here? You better turn around. Don't stop till you hit Desert Oasis. Okay. Alright, so I got a road to the Desert Oasis. Uh, why do you keep making me make these hard decisions? Desert Oasis. Oh, I didn't get any fatigue from that. Interesting. The peaceful oasis appears unaffected by recent troubles. A young man plays a guitar beneath a shady palm while children splash in the water. Theo. Shaken but not stirred, he's writing his hand he he is writing his stand and collecting spilled fruit. As you approach the familiar fruit stand, Theo stirs from his slumber upon hearing your footsteps. Thought he was just putting stuff up. Yeah, the horrible stories I've been hearing out of Anka and Clifton, they really make old sundry sal salesmen take stock of what he has. I have noticed a sudden drop in visitors since it happened. Okay. Mm. Oops. I don't know what I did, but I did it. Oops. Sorry, just a little rattled these days. Um, yeah. You didn't happen to sample the dried mushrooms I was keeping behind my stall, did you? Those aren't for sale. But I'm going to make you pull two cards. Yeah, we're just gonna have a bad time. Yeah, just like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We felt some light aftershocks here in the desert oasis, but other than little fallen fruit, it didn't do too much damage. The fruit stand, it's still standing, so am I. Well, figuratively at least. Though, I have been doing a lot of thinking lately about companionship. It wasn't something I ever really wanted before, you know? But I've been alone for a long time now, ever since... Nah, never mind. You don't want to hear about an old man's brushes with romance. That's your fault. Mm-hmm. That didn't come out the way I meant it to. That's been happening to me a lot lately. Yep. Stop. 
doing this to me. It is driving me crazy. All right. When we have, you find Diva picking some pomegranates from a healthy looking tree. She spots you and waves you over with a broad smile. Can this conversation go better, please? I haven't had a single good conversation today. Your back couldn't, couldn't stay away, eh? I don't blame you. This place has a natural beauty to it. Especially in troubled times with the world drying up. A place like this is, it's a bit of a beacon of hope, wouldn't you say? That's my sales pitch anyway. Why do you hate me? Um. Ever heard of a city called Hara? Do you have the road to Hara? If not, I don't blame you. It's really old and news doesn't travel like it used to these days. That's where I was born. It was a grand old city, founded way, way back. I was too young to recall life there in a great detail, but I do remember a deep sadness when my family had to leave our home. You see, Hara dried up. The water ran out. After that, no amount of storied history could save it. Now only spooky ghosts live there. Probably. Here today, gone tomorrow. Pretty grim, huh? Okay. Alright. Please have squares. Please have squares. Yeah! <laughs> uh. Oh, don't worry. It's not all doom and gloom. Just look around. We've got fresh water, we've got fruit trees. The planet's giving us another chance. <clears throat> this time around, we'll do better. It's true the roads aren't as friendly as they once were, but thanks to brave folks like you, that can change. I spent a lot of time working out the best routes to get around the rough patches. Just try me. Okay. Uh... Why do you hate me? Hmm. Oh, I didn't mean to be pushy. I just get excited, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna ruin this relationship too. Oh, I'm not explaining myself very well today. Note to self, go to bed earlier. Yep, that's my fault. Alright, well I guess it won't be productive conversation. Don't let that stop you from coming back to visit though. Okay. If she, even if she's not trying to be pushy, it still feels like Diva is trying to get you to do something, which always seems to put you on the defensive. Okay, cool. I have another one of these and another one of these. So. I would rather have... Hmm. All right. So I guess we can go on to Long Gate. The gateway to the Long Expanse once bustling, it now seems sees few visitors. Let's go there. No. Oh. Old lady, Mimi. Anias. Past the desert oasis, past the caravan routes and desert encampments, the long gate marks the edge of the world. It seems untouched by earthquakes or dust storms. He looks like he wants something. A rare delicacy. 
A well-dressed gentleman approaches you on the outskirts of town. The layer of dust collecting on his fitted cuffs is almost as thick as his accent. He wipes them off before extending a hand to shake. How do you do? My name's Anias. Well, it's not really Anias, but I'd rather you say the rough approximation than outright butcher it. All right, nice. Uh, let's figure out what we can do here. I wanted to ask if you might know where a fellow traveler could acquire some camel's cheese. I absolutely adore the stuff, but no one around here seems to keep it in stock absolutely no idea. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. The people down here are fairly unadventurous despite living at the crossroads of the world. Such a shame. You know what else is a shame? That I don't have anything to help you. Do you need me to say it a little slower? Uh, okay, good. Stop. Anyone who's curious about this world would have left ages ago. The stragglers want comfort and safety, as if those things couldn't be swept up in an instant. I don't live here. My people have been traveling, trawling the long expanse, and beyond since you before yours discovered agriculture but alas that's neither here nor there do you know where i might find some camel's cheese or not no uh decidedly no yeah uh am i making myself clear just end this conversation dude it's killing me um I didn't mean to offend. Between his accent, strange words, and the relentless sun, the conversation does not go well. Anaya seems to anticipate your discomfort before you do and turns to take his leave. Uh, okay, what do we want? Mimi! Mimi is in a bit of a tizzy. She's covered in dirt and clearly been busy digging in her succulents, digging up her succulents and stuffing them into a large suitcase. Uh-oh. Mm. Have we met before? You look familiar, but nah, probably not. Don't tell me you came all the way here just for my succulents. If so, you arrived just in time. You see, I've been exchanging letters with an old friend. Got me thinking, maybe I should move down to the desert oasis so we can pick up where things left off. Is that bunkers? Yes. Uh, this one. Well, aren't you a little devil egging me on to do something crazy? I knew I liked you, kid. But here's the thing, I'm not no I'm no sprout anymore, and I've been setting setting my roots down for long enough, long, an uh, awful long time now. What if moving to Desert Oasis is a huge mistake? Um. Uh, crap. Well, that's not helpful advice. Maybe I should stay put. I'm about to, like, destroy this woman's relationship with the... Yep. Draw two cards. You're not really convincing me with that argument. Yep, okay. Oh, never mind. It was a silly idea in the first place. 
Cool. Mimi frowns, realizing she was being impulsive. She suddenly reconsiders, opening the suitcase back up and replant her succulents in the soil. Uh... I don't want to... Oh, this is a hard decision. I really don't need two of these. They're just getting in the way. So I don't have any clues. As to what happened to the caravan. And no one's giving me a road to Hara or to the Oasis Gardens, which is probably like that one man. And mm. all right, what's going on in the not a whole lot. And I haven't found any scrap whatsoever. So let's try to go to Clifton. How long is that going to take me? Five days? Okay. The markets are empty, the stalls shuttered. Hey, it's Nadine. Clifton is filled with the sounds of construction. The natural beauty of the surrounding cliffs lie in stark contrast to the broken windows and collapsed water basins. She doesn't like it when the caravan falls behind schedule. They are hella behind schedule. While a few members of the caravan repair their trucks along the side of the obstructed road, Nadine is in the process of attaching a plow to the front of her cab, hoping to clear a path. We were on our way back to Bartow to start the route over again, but the caravan got caught off here in Clifton. Landslides really did a number on this place, not to mention the roads and a few of our trucks. Figured as long as we're stuck here, may as well lend a helping hand. If you come across any useful materials, you should consider doing the same. Uh, so you can see that I have really shitty cards. It's what your mom would do if she were here now. Funny, after all this time, it appears she rubbed off on me more than I realized. Yeah, of course. If she were here now, she'd definitely be using dynamite. I figure that's why the Rilkers waited till she passed to make their move. She stood up to them in Old Marae as a, a ways back and never let him forget it either. Okay, so I can do this. Okay. I don't know what plans the Rilkers have for Bartow. Got something to do with the land, I reckon. Well, don't much matter to me. The way I see it, the caravan provides a service people all o over rely on. Long as folks are moving to Bartow and not away from it, that's all I need to keep it in on the route. Thank you, Nadine. Unfortunately, you're having some trouble keeping the store afloat. Not sure how long folks will stick around without it. Nadine hops into the cab and rubs up the engine, signaling for the others to get out of the way so she can drive through and clear the road. Okay. Oh, good. Another one of those. I don't think I need it. I don't need any of this. <sighs> They're trying to fix their stall. A distraught Alexis stands amidst the ruins of the Clifton Market, their stall in shambles and signature umbrella notably absent from view. Oh, dear customer, I'm afraid I'm in the midst of a crisis. My stall, stall was crushed in the landslide.
I can make a mistake! Okay. You're thinking, I'm sure I can't just obtain another table? And the answer is no, my image depended on that stall. Okay. My customers trusted that stall. How can they find me in Clifton's sea of vendors now? Uh, hmm. It's not gonna be helpful. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry again. I have nothing to sell. Excuse me, do you mind not interrupting my meltdown? Perhaps I will simply lie down and die. Oh, cruel world. What a terrible fate for a humble merchant. All right, bye. You leave Alexis to their sorrows. There's enough pieces in need of picking up around here as it is without getting sucked into someone else's drama. Uh, it's not. Hey, Rohit. The town hasn't suffered as badly as some places, but several buildings and a grove of nut trees have been buried in sand and rock. Rohit scrambles alongside local workers to clear the debris. Hey, could you give me some help moving these rocks? I don't want to drop one and accidentally shatter a toenail by accident. You know, it feels good to help people without worrying about the profit margins of what we're doing. Give me a mistake before. Yes. Do you think that these pecan trees can be saved? They have hundreds of rings inside. It, it would be a shame to lose such old trees. It's kind of weird, but I recently read about this technique calling, called grafting. Apparently, you can merge different trees together. Isn't it just kind of wild how the grafted trees don't even have to be the same species? Let's do this one. Yes, I can make a mistake. Uh, can I make this mistake? Yes! <laughs> Excellent. Do you think I should run my idea past the local leaders? That sounds really intimidating, but if it helps them save the grove, I'll do it. With your encouragement, Rohit, Rohit goes to ask the Clifton leaders about grafting the damaged trees together. Uh, fine. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Clifton's got their nonsense going on. And then I gotta go to Bukum Borough and I guess Old Hurst and Ramina. Ramina. Because I haven't found anything. You come across a roadhouse packed with travelers while a storm darkens the horizon. Wait it out. Each traveler takes a turn telling a story to pass the time. You repeat one of Mom's about windsurfing over Clifton. A native of the town pokes holes in it and you backtrack in embarrassment. Choose a card to get to gain backtrack. It will overwrite existing effects. Um, my fatigue? Uh, oh, okay. Um, sure. Miriam. The lone dirt road bustles with activity of repairs and new construction. Shopkeepers sweep glass and write di displays and townsfolk pitch in wherever they are able. The freshly painted marquee announces the latest shows in from the city. 
She's sitting at a table with hot chocolate. <clears throat> As foremen direct laborers across the broken tracks and engineers squabble over topography maps, Miriam has set up a table of free hot chocolate for railroad workers. Her tip jar is completely full. I told the youngsters that I didn't want their money, but they insisted. Had to get a jar to keep the bills from blowing away. Uh, bullets? Okay. The cook, the cacao mixture wasn't good enough for chocolate bars, but it makes a fantastic hot drink. The ingredients are sourced from all over. I didn't think it would be giving so much product away to grown adults. Guess that what happens when I feel taken care of. The worst part? I could have moved years ago, but the clods in the charge kept voting down the railroad repairs. I hope little Basilio and his brother are doing all right. They were in a rough place even before all this. You caught him looting? Those boys need to get out of there. Look what that city dressed folks to do just to get by. Even with the railroad, gotta, gotta have savings to get out. Um. Nice. Matilde said it's looking up for them, but she also said Bucumboro was in for the worst rain in the decade. Instead, we got the earthquakes. There's no future if people aren't able to get out and find themselves. I gotta support the railroad even if I'm already here. Oh. I'm not gonna make things much better, Miriam. It's hard to hear over all this construction. Uh, bullets. I don't want any back talk. Be careful with that hot cup. Alright. Constant hammering in the background gives you a headache. Can you excuse yourself early? And Miriam seems displeased. Yeah, not surprised. <laughs> Might as well. Ah, no one's excited about being stuck here, at least of all him. <laughs> You spot a familiar figure leaning up against a rundown building. It's Ramir, idly picking his nails with a pocket knife. If he's here, something tells you it's because he has nowhere else to go. <sighs> Bukumbora. Man. Not to be insensitive, but this place is worse than Barto. Oh, how how's Barto? Everybody's dead. Cool. If it's a choice between boredom and being talked down to, I think I'll take my chances with the former. Listen, I am not trying. <laughs> yeah, I did that to myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that's just what this town needs. Another know-it-all. Thought I already had dibs on that job. Hmm. Okay, at least I can do that. Weird. Um, yeah, I can't. I thought being stuck here was bad enough, but I, then I factored in being stuck here with you day in and day out. Bye. Foul-tempered and glum, you decide to let Ramirez stew in his own miserable juices for now. Why are you giving me crap cards? Have you done enough to me already? Matilde, she's handing out iced tea to the workers. While the engineers work 
to repair the railroad, other Bukumbura residents chip in as well. Washerwomen distribute cold towels, musicians sing to raise morale, the Mat and Matilda hands out cups of iced matcha. I'm glad that you're here. We might not be engineers, but everyone's got a role when disaster rolls into town, yeah? Could you help me hand out drinks? I would love to. However, my day hasn't been going so well. You don't have to help if you don't want to. I am trying! I would love to help. Like, literally, I would love to help. You don't read tea leaves. You don't know the kinds of things I've seen. You're just gonna get random cards because my life is forfeit. I wish I could help you, but doing a reading right now would be too risky. Matilda's negativity is both unusual and overwhelming. You try to listen patiently, but she only manages to talk herself into feeling more down. Yeah, me too. Uh, I was trying to figure out what to do. And I've completely forgotten everything from yesterday. Because I found the uh, caravan. Yeah, I found the caravan. Uh, and I need to find scraps. So, one, two, three, that's not a week. <clears throat> okay. So, if I go to Aldhurst, that'll take me till the 35th. Um, and then, oh, I did get a fatigue card. That's gross. Okay. Or is that a stop? Oh, that's probably a fatigue card. I'm gonna have so many fatigue cards. Um, I'm not 38. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go to Althurst and then Remina. Remina. <clears throat> you approach the welcoming rest stop off the side of the road. Travelers sit around sharing stories. Join them for a spell. One woman entrances the group with the story of massive dust storm outside Clifton. You listen and learn, preparing for the road ahead. Uh, for a single accord. Um, I can put it on anything. Let me put it on this. I really wish that could have gotten me, like, taken away a fatigue card, but whatever. Now I- oh, I have five now. Sweet. <laughs> Lars, he's looking pretty rough. Although there doesn't appear to be much damage from the recent earthquake, most shops in the plaza are closed. Some locals stand at the street corner eyeing the tents and makeshift shelters that have gone up as refugees trickle in. Okay. <laughs> Destitute. He wears a couple layers of clothes, clean but stained with old mud with the cuffs and knees. He looks like he's had to choose between what to keep and what to leave behind two or three times over. I've had to do that about the same amount of time. You look new. Did the weather bring you to Altarst? I haven't been here long either. Hmm... Okay. Um, I thought about going to the Great Gambit instead of here. Maybe I made a wrong choice. Oh, oh, I know how to get to uh, the road from Great Gambit to Tuzan Canals. I don't even know where Great Gambit is. Word of warning, people around here don't like refugees. They act like it's our fault what happened to us. Yeah. I just want enough room to grow some food. Not gonna bother anyone. 
But that doesn't stop him from bothering me. Yeah. Why do you hate me, Lars? No. Didn't you hear? I'm, listen, I'm not trying to do this on purpose. I just have really crap cards. A place with weather like this, they'll build luxury homes, hire security, and cultivate a lawn. No room for vagrants. That guy Salem shooed me away earlier because I was too close to his stall. He treated me like some rodent. Oh, you're from Bartow? Is the land any good there? How about the people? That matters too. Um... Sorry, I haven't been myself lately. Can I play two of these? <laughs> don't worry about me. Just move on. <sighs> Your comments don't don't go over well. He's gotten enough of them. Yeah. Oh boy. Hmm. Salem. Cool. Although there doesn't appear to be... Oh, I already read that. You catch him shooting a furtive glance over his shoulder before ducking behind his stall. Well, let's go bother him. Since he likes bothering people. Salem drives his shovel into the earth and leans upon it as you draw near. He's playing it cool, but anyone can see the sweat glistening on his brow. <sighs> Wonderful Aldhurst wasn't hit as hard by recent events as its neighbors. But that's not to say it's gone untouched. By the way, if you're heading north, take the back roads to avoid any panhandlers, hitchhikers, or leeches of any other stripe. Cool. Oh, there's a road from Altars to Anka. Nice. I think I've already been to Anka. Yeah, at least for this trip. Oh, goody. We're gonna start off real nice. I'm not unreasonable one here. Vagrants are trying to steal my precious pogey. I'm sure they are. There's this. Well, at least I have this. Unfortunately, this place seems to have become something of a beacon for refugees from the surrounding area. I'm sympathetic to their plight, but it's no excuse to be squatting on public property or causing trouble around town. Well, whatever the case, desperate times call for desperate measures. This batch of kimchi isn't ready to be buried yet. However, if I don't do something with it soon, one of those squatters is likely to steal it the first moment I, my back is turned. You're a piece of shit. Mind stepping away from the kimchi? You're making me a little nervous. Alright, bye. Blissfully, obli blissfully oblivious to the casual callousness of his words, Salem returns to digging his hole. You won't be offering a helping hand. I think the music is really loud. I don't want it! Whatever. No, music settings are fine. Okay. Her store appears to be closed. The uncooperative door to magnetic music is even more stuck than usual today. In fact, it's not opening at all. You try knocking. A moment later, the door cracks open and an annoyed Aurora appears. Sorry, magnetic music is closed for now. Got people I don't trust around. The instrument's coming to, into Althurst. Um, 
Like me! Yeah. Can't you take a hint? We're closed. Uh, no, I cannot take a hit. Hint. And you have to draw two cards. Sorry, doesn't matter how much you whine or complain. Magnetic music is closed. Closed! Oh, I have to... Okay. Um, I'm gonna mess up my own deal with you. Cool. I'm making the right decisions for my store. If that bothers you, take your business elsewhere. Aurora closes the door in your face with a little more force than necessary to make her point. Perhaps you best leave her to it for now. Why would I want that? Uh, I don't have many O's. I have a lot of triangles though. Okay. So, I'm not going to get anything done here. Oh, so there's Grey Cambit, and there's the road to Anka. Interesting. <coughs> Boy, so it's 36. It's going to take us three days to get to Rimina. And then from there, it's going to take us to Old Marais. But how much longer will it take to get back to Bartow? Ooh. I think we only have enough time to go to Remina and then go back home. Wait, okay, so three days. And then it'll take five days from here. So... Oh, do I not have time? What's eight plus three? Eleven? I think I might just have enough time to go to Remina and then to Bartow back home with like nothing in my pockets and a million fatigues. All the roads to Remina reflect the devastation of the earthquake, but the town on a hill only caught a few small aftershocks. A few sections uh, of the perimeter wall have collapsed and one or two roofs around the town will need repairs. XN220 kneels over a pool of spilled oil, attempting to scoop it up with its bare mechanical hands. Seismic activity ceased. Equilibrium systems rebalancing. Current status 32% functional. Uh, I guess that's good. Uh, well. Whose turn is it? I thought it was my turn. I messed myself up! Boo. Yeah. I figured it out. I'm sorry. That is a function. I cannot perform. Cool. This is a function I cannot perform, but we have an accord, so. Uh, that is also a function I cannot perform. <sighs> Access denied. Okay. Me too. Greetings, old friend. I am so confused to see you. According to my database, you have been living in Barto for 15,708 days, 11 hours, 2 minutes, and 18 seconds. Cool. Uh, so we're about to end it. The pineapple around your neck, it holds little material value, and yet you were so sad to have lost it earlier. We're going to end this conversation. This conversation is making me feel nostalgic. No correction. It is making me feel dizzy. Yep. 
Having made very little progress cleaning up the spill, XN220 stands up only to slip and fall back down into the puddle of olive oil. Could XN220 have known mom? Pretty sure. Oh, why are you giving me these cards? I don't want them. All right, Haruto. Let's fail your conversation too. You find the shop in a state of disrepair. Broken bottles spill their thick, syrupy contents out across the floor. The unfortunate casualties of a fallen crate. Haruto stands on a ladder attempting to patch a large crack in the wall. I'm about to make your day so much worse. Just look at this place. The quake really did a number on it. This wall alone cracked right down the middle. Can you hand me that spackle? I would love to, but I'm going to roll a one on this conversation. Just letting you know prior. Okay. Perhaps other shops in the area got hit worse than I did. But look, I'm all here, alone here. I really don't remember what voice I gave you. It's going to take forever fixing this place up with just one set of hands. Pass me my hammer, would you? I'm gonna fuck this up. <sighs> yep. Oh wait, I forgot I got an accord. So at least there's that. Okay, XN220 helps where he can, but the aftershocks have really done a number on his equilibrium sensors. Poor bot's got out back right now, having a bit of trouble keeping his oil down. Is this where I'm gonna like fail this conversation? It's times like this that I really wish I had a responsible brother with a strong worth ethic. <sighs> Is that too much to ask? Mm. Yes. I don't want your pity. It's not going to fix this place up any faster. Listen, dude, I cannot help you. I can help you now. These repairs are going to take days. Um. <laughs> cool. Bye. Take a look around. I really don't have time to chit chat right now. At least I gotta help him with the hammer. Haruto grunts. He turns his back on you and resumes working on the wall. Stop giving me these things. I don't want them. Uh, I guess we just go back to Barto because it's gonna take us how long to get there? Oh, that is really cutting it close. Yeah. Are you sure you, uh, I don't have any other choice? I gotta go. Oh, crap. Nine fatigues. <sighs> After a long trip, it's always good to be back home. If Barto is still looking a little extra rough around the edges. Well, he's gonna look even more rough after this conversation. Elias is behind the counter, frothing with s frothing some milk. He's standing next to a sign that reads, Enjoy our new dining terrace. Yeah, he is not happy to see me. You sure took your sweet time out there. But hey, it's not like Barto is suffering or anything. Thanks, dude. Did you at least find some building supplies I asked you to bring back? No. Goody! We're gonna start off on a great start. What's that got to do with anything? Sometimes I just don't get you. I don't follow. Guess we don't see as eye to eye as we used to. I would love to be able to see eye to eye. However, this is all I have. <laughs> yeah. I really need to get be getting back to my work. Cool. He didn't bring home any scrap for repairs. Elias throws up his hands and walks over to the side of the counter. He misspells the customer's name in a coffee cup, then calls out to let them know their order is ready. Um, all right, I guess we go home and I think we only got like one item. Yeah, we just got licorice. 
Oh, I am not looking forward to this last trip because this last trip means that everything is just going to go sour real quick. Nine fatigue cards. Holy hell. The days pass as you sit in your spar store, frustrated by this month's meager haul. Next time will be different, you keep telling yourself. Next month is going to be so much more fruitful. Samuel bought up the licorice for the Roadhouse Food Co-op. Aw, oh, thanks, Samuel. Thank you for joining me as I played Signs of the Sojourner by Echo Dog Games. The next episode will be out shortly. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode drops. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the completely free Discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind. Let's keep the comments chill so no hate or spoilers as I'm not above removing those comments and the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.